Well, hey there, I'm Emma from mm English. In this lesson, we'll go over the pronunciation of some really common English expressions that native speakers use when they first meet someone. Hello, how are you? I am well, thank you. Do you have plans today? Would you like to get a coffee with me? I'm afraid I can't today. Perhaps we could meet another time. That's not a problem. I suggest you call me when you are available. Did you understand that whole conversation? I think that you probably did. And I also think that most native English speakers that you come across, they don't actually speak like that, right? If only everyone spoke as clearly and with such good pronunciation. But let's take a look at a more realistic conversation, something a little similar to what you'd hear in the real world. Hey, how are you going? Hey, not too bad. What are you up to today? Do you want to grab a coffee? Oh, I'd love to, but I'm a bit busy today. I've got a few things on later. That's cool. How about you give me a call when you're free? So native English speakers have a habit of reducing and contracting words when spoken. And we link sounds together when we speak. So it's really difficult to know where one word ends and another word starts. It's especially common when we use everyday expressions, really common ones. We use them so much that we get lazy with our pronunciation. But that can make it really hard for English learners like you who are practicing with conversation that's like this. But most of the time, this is the actual situation. So in this lesson, I'm going to go over some common and natural English expressions that you'll hear and maybe even use yourself every single day. By the time that we're done, you'll have a better idea what these expressions mean and how to respond. But you'll also know how they're pronounced naturally by native English speakers. And it can be quite different to what you think. And make sure that you hang around until the end of the lesson because I've got a surprise for you and a few bonus expressions to practice with me. Let's start at the beginning. There are lots of different English greetings, things that we say when we first meet someone. Good morning, how are you, all of those things. But let's focus on how's it going. So this is kind of a strange one. How's what? going. I'm not going anywhere. How's it going is a really common greeting. It's an informal way of asking someone how they are. So you might even say this to your boss if you get on well together, but you probably wouldn't use it in formal situations. You would use it when you call your friend, say, hey, how's it going? If you ran into your neighbor at the supermarket, they might say to you, how's it going? It's informal, it's friendly, and it's used all the time. So let's take a closer look at the pronunciation. How is it going? So firstly, we don't pronounce the full verb is. We combine how and is together to make a contraction. How's. It's really unnatural to say, how is it going? in this context. So make sure you use the contracted form like native English speakers would. How's, how's. So notice how the letter S is pronounced as the voiced Z sound, right? Next trick. When a word starting with a vowel follows a consonant sound, any consonant sound, but in this case Z, then we can link those sounds together, not How's it, but how's it, how's it. They should push together those sounds, how's it. And finally, you may not hear a native speaker pronounce the final G here in going. So this expression is really casual. You'll often just hear it pronounced with N at the end instead of N. So that's going instead of going. So let's put it all together. How's it going? 
The intonation goes down at the end. How's it going? How's it going? You try it. How's it going? Awesome, that sounds really good. All right, let's try another now. And this happens all the time. A time when you're getting introduced to someone new, someone that you've never actually met before, but you know a lot of information about them. So maybe it's the husband of your colleague and your colleague talks about her husband all the time. You don't know them, you've never met them before, but you know of them, you know some information about them. Well then, when you meet them, it's really common to say, oh, I've heard a lot about you. It's a really nice way of saying, my friend tells me about you all the time. I feel like we know each other already. It's really friendly and it's so common and it's a very polite response. I've heard a lot about you. So for example, hey, this is my friend from uni that I always talk about. Ah, yeah, I've heard a lot about you. So nice to meet you. Let's take a closer look at the pronunciation. Have at the start of the sentence, it usually joins together with the subject in spoken English, so it becomes a contraction. I've or we've, for example. Not I have, but I've. Make sure you have that consonant sound coming out right. It's one that you sometimes forget, isn't it, on the end. I've, v, v, I've. Now, the H of heard, it often gets a little lost here. It's like the V sound from the end of I've links directly to the vowel in heard. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard. I've heard a lot about you. A lot of, a lot of, a lot about. Now, these words all pull together, don't they? can hear those sounds coming together. And in fact, we hear the flap T there as well. Well, in my Australian accent, you do. And it's also really common to hear that in American accents as well. But the T almost sounds like a D, D sound. And that happens often in English when the letter T is between two vowel sounds, like here. Now, even though the letter T is at the end of the word lot, it's followed by a vowel sound, and in spoken English, these words would pull together. So, you get a T between two vowel sounds, it makes a D, -d sound. <sighs> a lot about, a lot about, a lot about. With that T at the end, you'll hear a stop T, about, about. So I don't fully release the air after that T to make a complete T sound, not about, but about. Don't release the air. Let's try it all together now. I've heard a lot about you. I've heard a lot about you. Your turn. I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> now, if you said that to someone, it's really common for them to say back to you, all good things, I hope. Like, I hope that everything you heard about me was positive. So be ready for that. You might even decide to say, yeah, of course, all good things. I've heard all good things about you. <laughs> all right, so we've broken the ice a little there, but now, where do we go? What next? What are you up to? What are you up to? Up? What are you up to? <laughs> if you've ever been confused by this expression, you're not alone. It's even confusing for me when I think about it. <laughs> what are you up to is another way of saying, what are you doing now? If you're curious about what your friend is doing, you could say, hey, what are you up to? Or you can use it with another time expression to ask about future plans. What are you up to tonight? Do you have any plans tonight? What are you up to on the weekend? Do 
you have any plans on the weekend? So this expression has a couple of meanings. So when we start looking a little closer at the pronunciation, it gets really interesting. What are you up to? What are you up to? Now remember that flap T from before. Here it is again. In spoken English, what and are come together. The two vowel sounds make the t t. The t sound turn into a d d. The word are is unstressed here, so it reduces right down to become the schwa sound. Uh, water, 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 water. And u also reduces down as well. We hear the schwa again. What are you? What are you? What are you? So what are you becomes what are you? And you'll hear that question all the time in spoken English. What are you eating? What are you doing? It's kind of confusing, isn't it? But understanding how these words are spoken will help you to understand more native English speakers. But let's get back to this question. What are you up to? What are you up to? So the unstressed schwa and the a uh vowel sound that you hear in up are very, very similar. So they actually pull together. Y, up, yup, what are up? Hmm? So you really just hear you as the y sound. What are you up? What are you up to? Crazy, huh? And you wonder how sometimes it's really difficult to understand native English speakers, right? You have a go. What are you up to? What are you up to? Now, it's important to note that there are a lot of different variations between accents. So you may hear what you up to, where the ch, ch consonant sound is used. Whatcha, what you up to? Try it. What you up to? So this is such a common expression in English. If you hear a whole lot of mumbling at the start of a conversation with a native English speaker, don't freeze because they are probably just using these really common expressions and being lazy about it. So for you, understanding how the natural expression is different from the written words is really, really important. Now, to answer this question, you would simply explain what you are doing at that moment or your future plans if there was a time reference. But if you're not doing anything particularly interesting or you don't really have anything planned, then how do you answer this question? You say, not much or nothing much. Now, it's hard to believe that even these quick responses actually reduce down. So we don't hear the T in not. Not much. Hmm. Nothing much. Nothing much. Again, that NG, when spoken quickly at the end of a word, it sounds more like just nothing. Nothing. Instead of nothing. Nothing much. You might also say just finishing an email or just walking the dog. So this is the unstressed form of just, and it sounds like just, just. So this also helps to explain that the activity that you're doing at that moment, it's not really important. And notice as well that I've completely dropped the pronoun and the auxiliary verb. I didn't say, I am just finishing this email. I could, but often native speakers will drop this information if it's unnecessary. So the question that was directed at me, what am I up to? I don't really need to clarify that in my answer, I'm talking about myself, right? So I dropped it. It's not that important. Just walk on the dog. So tell me, what did you think of this lesson? I hope that it was useful for you. In a minute, I'm going to take you on a bit of an adventure outside of my studio to practice some more 
common expressions, ones that I use all the time. But before I do, I want you to add some common everyday English expressions that you want me to include in a lesson just like this in the future. If there's any that you want to understand more, then add them into the comments below so that I can make a lesson. Um, I'm ready to practice. Okay. Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't we practice outside? I've never really filmed outside before, but it's probably going to be really windy, bit of traffic, but I've been meaning to do it for a while. Do you want to try it? Let's just give it a go. Yeah? Sure. Uh, so give it a go is something that I use all the time give it a go. It means to try something new, right? Like right now, I've never filmed outside before and I'm not really sure how it's going to turn out, but I want to just see how it goes anyway. I would say all the time, give it a go. So depending on who you talk to, you might hear people say, I'll give it a shot or I'll give it a try or I'll give it a crack. All of these expressions that have really similar meanings. For me, I always say, give it a go. It's really easy to just roll off the tongue. And I'm gonna talk about how all of these words kind of push together when they're spoken naturally. Because you'll never hear someone say, let's give it a go, but instead, give it a go. And so what's happening is all of the words that end in the consonant sounds are actually linking to the ones that follow that are vowel sounds. So instead of give it, give it, give it. And notice how it, it's unstressed, so it reduces down to the schwa sound, give it. And also that T is a stop T, which means that I'm not fully pronouncing it. I'm not letting the air go afterwards. I'm not saying give it, but give it, give it. So it's stopping, I'm not releasing the air. Give it, give it a. So that article a, uh, it's a schwa and it reduces right down. Give it a, give it a. You might even hear that T, that flap T sounding more like a D there because naturally in my pronunciation with my accent, it'll reduce to that flap T sound. Give it a go, give it a go. Instead of give it a go, give it a go, give it a go. So why don't you give it a go? Try it. Give it a go. Let's give it a go. Right now, let's go. Ah, hang on a sec, I gotta get my phone. Okay, now let's go give it a go. Oh, hang on a sec, I'm gonna take this. Hi, mum. Hey. Can I give you a call back? I'm a bit busy. Yeah. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Oh, hang on a sec. I'm not coming to dinner tonight. I'll be, I'll come over tomorrow. Okay, see ya. All right, so that I said, hang on a sec. And I say that all the time. Hang on a sec, hang on a sec. It's a really casual, informal way of saying, just wait a moment. It's a little bit more, you know, because we're friends and we're just hanging out, it's much easier, you know, and much um, more relaxed to use that expression. So, hang on a sec, what's a sec? Well, a sec is, it's a short version of the word second. So I wanna focus on the first three words. Hang on a, hang on a, hang on a. So they kind of all come together, don't they, when I say them quickly. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. And that's because the consonant sounds at the ends of these words link straight to the vowel sounds that follow. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. So the a, uh, the article, links straight on behind. It's just a schwa. It's unstressed. Hang on a. Hang on a. Hang on a, it's really soft and flat. Hang on a sec. Try it with me. Hang on a sec. 
Hang on a sec. Nice run. Let's try another. Oh, with those clouds, we might be running out of time. Oh, we've got time for one more, but let's do running out of time, running out of time. We're running out of time, because we are. Look at these clouds. Um, we're running out of time. It's a really common expression. It's an idiom that you might already know, but we're going to focus on the pronunciation. So first up, we've got a contraction. We are. The auxiliary verb are comes together with the subject where. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. So instead of saying we are, it sounds quite sort of stiff and formal. But, you know, if you're speaking more naturally, just like a native English speaker would, you would probably just contract those two things together. Where, we're running, we're running. And then at the end of running, usually what happens with native English speakers is instead of pronouncing that mm sound at the end, they get really lazy and they'll just pronounce the mm, running, running, running. We're running, we're running. Then we've got out of time. Now, if they're pronounced really clearly, you can hear all of those words. But instead, when spoken naturally, you'll hear outer, outer. Out of becomes outer. And that's, you'll see the flap T there. You'll see that will reduce, that will become the D, D sound. Outer, outer. That's my accent anyway, the Australian accent will We'll use the flap T. Same with the American one. You might hear people say outer, but most commonly outer, outer time. And time is a stressed word there, so we hear it really clearly. I'm running out of time, or we're running out of time. We're running out of time. Why don't you try it? We're running out of time. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. It's been fun taking you outside. And I think we're going to keep going with this. We're going to keep giving it a go. <laughs> if you enjoyed this lesson, then make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking that subscribe button over there. And if you're ready to check out some new lessons with me, some pronunciation lessons or lessons about natural English expression, then check out these ones right here. And I'll see you in the next lesson.